Eleanor is trapped, and Prague has castled to the same side, and then played g7, g5 on that very same flank. We will see a peace sack by Hikaru, most likely. Yes, uh, I think that this is uh, usually a typical stuff, but the question is that is somebody mixing things up or not? Because now I'm a little bit confused and we have to see the camera, we have to see Hikaru's face that how is he reacting? I know exactly how this line happens, but apparently he did make a move A3, which ah, because usually Black's bishop, I think, goes back to C5 or, or something. I mean, I have some very vague memories from something like 10 years ago, and I looked at this position. Was Hikaru tricked? That's the big question. And this started out as a Four Nights English, the same opening uh, that featured in both of their classical games. Of course, in the first game, Hikaru was on the black side of the G3 English. He played knight d4. Prague plays bishop b4. The knight jumps out to d5, as is very standard. And e4, knight h4. This is a very well-known line. It's a tactical line, but it's well-known by theory. Bishop g2, d6. Castles, apparently, is one of the main moves? Or, or is castles the mistake? And according to the engine, a3 is the mistake, and the, apparently the move is d2, d4 after castles. But Peter, my, my insight in this position is non-existent. I, I know that this is a line vaguely, but I've never studied it. Yeah, it has so many different move orders. When black plays d6, when he castles, and I do believe that here maybe white was actually supposed to simply take that bishop on b4. Uh, uh -huh. Maybe it's possible, or to go a3 here. But Hikaru played castles, and after g5, he opted for a3, but after bishop a5, of course not bishop c5, because then white would run to d4 with a tempo, hit the bishop, and uh -huh. the bishop would be threatening to take the pawn on g5 with a winning pin. Uh, but black falls back with the bishop to a5, and now how do we save that piece on h4? Yeah, so that's what's happening. The knight on h4 is literally trapped. This is a, a, a dire concern for Hikaru. Now, obviously, white will have compensation, long-term compensation, based on black's compromised king position. My biggest question would be, what happens if white plays d4 here with the idea of meeting g takes h4 with bishop g5? And I'm answering my own question as I'm asking it. Black plays knight takes d5, c takes d5, and if Lex rook were on b8, then everything would work out perfectly. But black has this initial square for his knight, why knight b8? Because knight e7 is terrible. It blunders the g5 pawn. You need to keep the contact between black's queen and the pawn on g5. And white will lose the knight on h4. Now, what can white get in return? Well, white can pick up the e4 pawn. That's the low-hanging fruit. But Peter, after g takes h4, there is no question, even without the eval bar, that white's compensation here is woefully insufficient. Yes, black is underdeveloped. Yes, the king is weak. But all of these are resolvable problems. And what is white going to do to garner more compensation here and prevent the consolidation of Black's pieces. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm not seeing any compensation. I think Hikaru is in a state of shock that how did I mix, wow. this, mix this up? And, and usually, if something like this happens, you still have a bailout. It's, it just moves nine. But exactly in this position, I don't see a bailout at all because of the fact that Black can capture on d5 always, and just to highlight, yeah, that some ideas like b4, bishop b6, d4, also runs into knight takes d5, c takes d5. Now even black gets a extra option of taking on d4, but even if black just falls back to b8, nothing really happened. Nothing changed compared to the previous line. Crazy. And it's insane that white can't get more than one pawn for the piece, right? If I could get two pawns for the minor piece, okay. Then you could make a case that white's got some compensation. Here, all that white can get is that e4 pawn. That's it. And the queen from d1, it can't jump out to h5 because it's blocked by your pawn on e2. Oh my gosh. I'm also in a state of shock. Now, we know that Hikaru's pedigree involves an incredible ability to manufacture chances, sometimes in positions that aren't just lost, but there are no words in the English language to describe how lost they are objectively. We all know that as the Hikaru effect, but... Let's not forget that this is a 25 plus 10 game. This isn't Bullet Brawl. This isn't Title Tuesday. Prague has time to figure out how to consolidate his pieces. And objectively, it appears that Hikaru is borderline lost here. Yes, and that's the key. Yeah, it's a 25 minutes uh, rapid game. 
what we have been speculating about here, yeah, that this time control gives you the chance to spend time in the opening. And Hikaru is now really kicking himself. It might cost him the whole World Cup of trying to play instantly when he was not sure about the exact move order with the committed knight on h4. He should have spent the time here and at this moment to understand how he keeps things under control. But he wanted to show strengths. He castled g5 and then he went on to play a3 and after bishop a5, it's already too late to think. It's, it's just too late. It's bad time management. And it's easy, I think, for chess fans to exaggerate um, and to, to, you know, to say th certain things and to think certain things in these situations. How could Hikaru do this? You know, how could he not have spent time? And it just shows us that we're all human. And it doesn't matter how, what your rating is, what your pedigree is, what your reputation is. At some point or another, everybody mixes up lines. It's just something that happens because you have so much in your head as a super GM, so much that you have to retain that sometimes you are absolutely convinced and this happens in real life too. You know, sometimes you are absolutely convinced of a certain memory and, and then it turns out you were wrong all along. And maybe Hikaru is experiencing this. He imagined a different position in his mind. Maybe he thought that D2, D4 uh, garners the piece back and then realized, wait a second, that's a different position. That's with the bishop on C5. Whatever it is, Hikaru has to exercise those demons and start working on making his way back in this game, which will be a Herculean task, probably the hardest task that Hikaru has faced in this World Cup. He was losing in his first round tiebreaker against Venkat's Raman, but this seems to be even more objectively lost as he tries the move d3, and we will see Peter. Knight takes d5, cd, and knight b8 for sure. Yes, it's for sure. The move d3 is, of course, stronger than d4. It was also tops engine move. The point being that probably White will be able to capture with the pawn on e4. That's what I'm guessing. Does this give us some more control? But I don't really... I mean, the position is bad anyway. Uh, you can get a better version of a losing position, but definitely the question is how will Hikaru manage to at least set up a position where he can put up a fight, he can um, put some pressure on his opponent, and that's exactly what he's trying to, to create. And you don't come back from these positions in one move. First, you need to manufacture the type of position where Prague starts feeling uncomfortable. You start to sow a little bit of doubt in his mind. Maybe the win isn't that easy. That's what Ikaro does. This is going to be a long process for White of generating counterplay, maybe on the king side, maybe eventually on the queen side with b2, b4, and bishop c1 to b2. We will see how Hikaru arranges his remaining minor pieces. He's not going to have a lot of them left. In fact, he's only going to have his two bishops to rely on, but Prague double-checking there, making sure that knight takes d5 and knight b8 is the correct path, which it is, and then we're likely to see bishop takes d4, gh, and I mentioned before bishop b2, maybe bishop h6 is a more appetizing, more energetic way of deploying the bishop. Not totally sure uh, where that bishop is best put to use. Yeah, basically, if white already plays b4, then I'm pretty sure that white wants to play bishop b2, if we want to go bishop h6, then we should do that immediately. Because the bishop on a5 is actually quite a stupid piece that anyway we'll have to move to b6. It's a much better diagonal. <clears throat> well, it's uh, very difficult to speculate at this moment. It's clear that objectively black is clearly better, almost winning. But uh, the game is still ahead. Plug will need to control his nerves. We really cannot emphasize enough how not over this game is and how important it is not to just look at the eval bar. Uh, hopefully people have watched Hikaru enough to know what he's capable of in any time control. Right? The guy is one of the most resilient chess players in history, and he doesn't have uh, an, a, a type of psychological effect named after him for no reason. Like you said, Prague will have to control his nerves. He understands the significance of this game. If he wins with black... I mean, the likelihood that Hikaru strikes back in the next game with the black pieces is not all that high. So one of the most important stretches in Prague's young chess career, and we will see how he handles the stress and the tension of this moment with so many fans from India and his family undoubtedly watching and cheering him on. Man, I do not envy Prague here uh, as he fights all of those demons as well as the opponent that sits in front of him and tries to recover from this shocking blunder in the opening.
Yes, I think now we have to move on because uh, we definitely will be coming back to this game. <clears throat> what does it tell us? So we have the Janja Pomniashi Nihal Sadin game. Let me bring it up. 